Uh, greetings to you in the name of the Most High One. You know, that's how I like to start anything when I'm addressing believers, of which you are one, and we both belong to the same community of the Lord Jesus Christ. I like the phrase, our Lord Jesus Christ, shows that we uh, belong to him and he belongs to us, not only individually, but corporately. And I like the full title, the Lord Jesus Christ, because the Lordship of Christ, Jesus is Lord, especially by his death and resurrection, when he won the great victory over death and proved it by the resurrection, allows us to have confidence in the most difficult and desperate of circumstances, which our world faces as never before, and we do not know when it is going to come to an end. The reality is we're all in it. We don't know if we have it, and we don't know how long we have. But between now and then, the one thing we can be sure is the person and the work of God. And this last summer, I had the privilege of uh, teaching about 60 students in Colorado on, on the character of God. The providence of God is an extremely meaningful doctrine, a conviction that we must hold if God is sovereign at all. It affects our prayer life. It affects our confidence levels. But more so, it allows us to be in his ministry, in confidence and in victory. As I explore the confidence in the providence of God, whether in prayer or in work, there are three dimensions in his providence. One is his power, second is his goodness, and third is his wisdom. Providence says that all three are operating all the time, his power, his goodness, and wisdom. When we think about God and his providence, we shall never ever diminish his power. When you pray, if the Lord wills, that is not a statement that doubts his omnipotence. But it also affirms his goodness, that God's character as good can never be impugned. All of us know the great African repartee to the speaker. When the speaker says God is good, they say all the time, all the time, God is good. That even the desperate evil that we face because of a broken world brought on by our own sin and exacerbated by Satan and his demons, we have to somehow hold that God is good. The third dimension is God's wisdom. And there we submit. We do not know everything. He's the only one who can see all, who knows all, and has planned all things. So in our prayer life, we pray for God's power, God's goodness, and God's wisdom to intersect. We never command him to act. We anticipate his answers. We believe that he can intervene and change the course of personal history, family history, and life itself. And so the great verses of all things working together is not accidental or fatalistic it's god's providence causing all things to work together so let's hold the power of god the goodness of god and the wisdom of god not in tension but in amazing unity when we pray to him and we approach the future thank you so much for listening to these uh, home desk talks you're probably at home and at your desk, and I'm grateful for this channel of reaching into your lives. The providence of God, his power, goodness, and wisdom intersecting simultaneously for your good and his glory.